All right, everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to another United match preview. The first one of 2019. And the new year also brings with it the start of the FA Cup action for United as they play host to struggling championship side Reading at Old Trafford on Saturday afternoon in the third round. So we're going to have a look ahead at that game and look at if the FA Cup is United's best chance of silverware this season and a couple of the potential youngsters that could feature for United in this game. But before we get stuck into things, really, really be grateful that you could chuck a like on the video. Really helps us out. Gets the video out there to more and pe more people. Let's Helps the, the channel and the video grow in popularity. So if you could do that, that would be awesome. And if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button as well. And as I said, the FA Cup probably signifies... United and Oli Solskjaer's best chance of silverware this season after having been knocked out of the League Cup pretty early on, if I'm being honest, pretty embarrassingly so as well by Derby County. And then, even though we've made it into the knockout stage of the Champions League, we've got a really tall ask against a really good Paris Saint-Germain side. And, yeah, I mean, anything can happen there, but the odds are against us in that one. And as far as the Premier League goes, well, the title went out the window long ago. If we can even get top four, I think that's a uh, massive achievement considering where we were just a couple of weeks ago. But Oli Solskjaer, I think he is going to prioritise the, the FA Cup. I think he is going to, not not necessarily prioritise, I mean, but, but he is going to treat it serious. He's going to treat it as United's best chance for silverware this season, I feel. It's going to be a really important competition for both him and United going forward this season as, like I say, it is our main chance of coming out of this season with at least something to show for our efforts. And I do think that he is going to, like I say, treat it quite serious, the FA Cup, but I also, at least for this round, I think he is going to rotate a little bit and let some of the fringe players in the squad, who haven't really got much game time yet under Solskjaer, get some much-needed minutes on the pitch. And that could also include a couple of the youngsters. And I just alluded to it a little bit then, but since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has taken over at Old Trafford, we've seen a little bit more of an em emphasis put on bringing some of the youth players through. We've seen several players included, at least in the match day squad, and Angel Gomez has even come on and got a couple of minutes on the pitch as well, which was really, really nice to see. And... I can see that continuing with this game as well. And it'll be interesting to see at least who's on the bench. I'm not sure if, if we'll see any of them actually start in the game. But I could see any of the likes of Angel Gomez, Tahi Chong, Jimmy Garner and more importantly Mason Greenwood being included on the bench. There was a lot of rumours a couple of weeks ago that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer told Mason Greenwood get ready for the Reading game. So whether that means he's going to be included in the match day squad or he's going to be actually on the bench for the game, I'm really, really interested to see because if you've seen any of my previous videos on Mason Greenwood, he is an absolute revelation at youth levels for United. He's been banging them in throughout the youth, the youth levels from the eight, different ages, from six, under 16s to under 18s, smashing it at under 23 level, and he's only just turned 17. So this kid could... the could, could take the world by storm because every single time he's presented with a challenge, he's gone and absolutely smashed it. So I'm really, really excited to see if he is on the bench, if he comes off, because if there's any young youth player that I would that I would really back to go and absolutely blitz it on his debut, it is Mason Greenwood. I'm not trying to put too much pressure on, pressure on him, but every single obstacle he's just absolutely hurdled over so far coming up through the youth ranks and I expect that to continue when he gets his debut and potentially it could be this weekend. And just having a little bit of a look back at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's previous games in charge of United so far and, and I think a player that has gone a little bit under the radar so far in these previous four games under Solskjaer and given the fact that we've been a lot more free-flowing attacking wise uh, with the likes of Rashford, Lingard, Pogba, Martial, all looking a lot more dangerous. I think one player that needs to be singled out for a, quite a lot of praise is Victor Lindelof. I think he's been absolutely quality since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Well, he's been quality all season, but especially since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has taken over. 
and we've just allowed him to be the player that he is rather than trying to mould him into something different. And it's been really good to see him kick on and develop over these last couple of weeks. And I think his passing out from the back has been absolutely key in into what Solskjaer has, has, has put, to put down as the United game plan so far. Because constantly you see him bringing the ball out from the back. You see him playing it through the through the final thirds, in, into the final third even, uh, for the likes of Rashford and Martial and Pogba to get on and create stuff with. And it all usually stems from Victor Lindelof. And not only that, he's had to play with a couple of partners now, both with Phil Jones and Eric Bay. And he no doubt have to also mop up for Chris Smalling as well, whenever he's fit as well. So I think he's done really, really well. And I just think a little bit of, of recognition should go his way because we were all slagging him off, myself included, 12 months ago. I didn't think he was ever going to make it at United given his first season, but I've been proven completely wrong and he's been probably our best defender this season. And I just hope we can see more and more of that as we go along for, into the final bits of this season because I think his coolness and I think his ice-like persona and his, and his quality of passing out from the back could really be key for us going forward. I know looking at our opponents on Saturday lunchtime in the third round in Reading and they've had a pretty... Poor season in the championship, sitting in 23rd position under Jose Manuel Gomez. The club from Berkshire really, really struggled to get any sort of form together. In fact, they, without a win in their last 10 games and just off the back of a real thumping 4-1 at home against Swansea City. They do have a couple of ex-United players in their ranks, the likes of Tyler Blackett and John, uh, John, uh, John O'Shea. I almost forgot his name then. John O'Shea as well. So good to have a little bit of a good to see some of the United old boys in the ranks as well. But hopefully we get one over the, over them on Saturday lunchtime and kick and kick on and progress into the fourth round. There are a couple of players though that we need to keep an eye on, even though they have been performing pretty poorly in the Championship so far this season. Uh, the first one is Bod Barson. Their striker, the Icelandic striker, he's their top goal scorer this season with seven goals. You've also got Mete from the central midfield area, who's also chipped in with seven goals, which is not a bad return for a central midfielder. Come forward, if you will. And like I say, then you've got the likes of Tyler Blackett and um, John O'Shea as well. And then you've also got you've also got Sam Baldock as well, who's who's their who's their um, talisman almost. He's the he's the one that. He's the one that drives the team forward, and uh, and try and and picks it up. He's he's their main, he's their their leader on the pitch, if you will. Um, so there are a couple of players we've got to watch out for. But in all honesty, we should really be putting teams like Reading to the sword. I mean, there is a little bit of a case that we could actually overlook Reading, and they could come and surprise us. But in 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 all. In all honesty, we should be breezing past teams like Reading. Because, uh, granted, under Jose Mourinho, I'd have felt a little bit more cautious going into this game. But at home, the way we've been playing in recent weeks, aside from the Newcastle game, which was a different kettle of fish altogether. But in, the, in these sorts of games, we've been putting teams to the sword. And hopefully, we can carry on and do that again on Saturday lunchtime and make it into the fourth round pretty easily if I'm honest and as far as the United side now like I say I do feel like there is going to be a little bit of rotation uh, with some of the players who've not really got the game time so far under Solskjaer and getting the vital minutes on the pitch so I think with that in mind Sergio Romero comes in for a rare start in goal giving David De Gea just a weekend off he deserves it let's be honest he's the best keeper in the world and he plays pretty much every other minute for us so give him a little bit of a rest let Romero come in for a rare appearance Right fullback, I'm not sure he's fit because he's not been in the squad the last couple of games, but I would like to see Diogo Dallo continue on at right fullback because anyone is better than Antonio Valencia, as we saw against Newcastle United. I don't know if there's any other fit centre backs in the club at the moment because I know Rojo and um, Smalling are both injured, and I think Bay's suspension carries over into this game as well. So it wouldn't surprise me if we still saw Lindelof and Jones at centre back. Left back, I'd give Luke Shaw a game off and bring in Ashley Young there. I think he can. He should be able to do do enough against uh, the likes of Reading and give 
Luke Shaw some much needed minutes just away from the pitch because he's played practically every minute under Solskjaer and played quite a lot under Mourinho as well this season. Now midfield, I would go with a completely rotated midfield. I'd give Pogba a game off. He didn't look quite up to his usual standard against Newcastle, so I'd give him the game off, give him the day off, let him just rest up and what have you because we should have enough heat anyway. So I would go with a midfield three of Fred, Scott McTominay, because he's been in and out of the... Uh, he's been around the squad, even though he hasn't really featured much, and I can't really see him being a Solskjaer player, but wouldn't surprise me if he got some minutes because he's not really featured recently. Um, then I would, just ahead of them, I was in two minds whether we could potentially see Andreas Pereira in the number 10 cam rugs. I think that could be a really interesting position for him against this Reading side. Or we could potentially see Angel Gomez getting his first start for United. So I'm not sure who it would be out of those two. Then, going forward, the front three. I do think Lukaku is going to start through the middle. I do think Sanchez is going to come in for his first start as well on the left-hand side under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And then on the right-hand side, again, I was tempted to go with Taggy Chong, but I think we will see Juan Mata there. Uh, he st did start against Newcastle. wasn't great, but I just feel like this is a perfect game for Juan Mata to just give him some minutes because... I don't really see him being a key player for us in the big games, the likes of the games, the likes against uh, Tottenham, who are next up, and we need all our best players for that. So rather than going with the likes of Lingard, I think we would see Juan Mata there just as well for his link-up play and his creativity as well coming in on that on that right hand side. Plus, if he come, if he's coming in on the right hand side into the middle, it gives Diogo Dallo a hell of a lot of room down that channel to get up and down, which he loves to do. So that's the side I'd like to see us line up with. Obviously, hopefully we see a couple of the youngsters on the bench at least. And like I said, we can see Mason Greenwood. I would love it if he could come on and, and bag a goal. That would be amazing. Really, really amazing if he could do that because I wouldn't really put it past him either. Not many youngsters I would, wouldn't put it past. He's one of them. Fantastic talent and I can't wait for him to bust on the scene at Old Trafford. And as far as the scoreline, like I say, we should be putting teams like this aside. And I think it should be pretty comfortable at home, especially under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, the way we have been playing. I'm going to say 3-4-0, something like that. And United pretty much cruising to the fourth round. And it, uh, yeah, it should be a pretty co comfortable win against a pretty poor, out-of-form Reading side. So, but that's just my opinion. Let me know in the comments section what scoreline you think it's going to be. Let me know if you think Mason Greenwood is going to be included in the in the squad or any of the youth, other youth players you would like to see Solskjaer include in the squad. Also, let me know your starting 11 predictions as well. And as always, if you have enjoyed this, drop a like on the video, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys next time.